So, what is this term? Acute encephalitis syndrome or AES, right? This acute encephalitis syndrome was used is used by WHO as a syndromic surveillance for JE. In the context of Japanese encephalitis, it is used. So, a person of a person of any age, any time of the year, when there is a sudden acute onset of fever with a change in mental status, like there can be confusion, disorientation, coma, etc., with or without seizures, which we already discussed, right? There is altered sensorium with fever or with seizures or with focal deficits. So, similar presentation only. So, any person who is fitting into this definition, you will label as acute encephalitis syndrome and then the diagnostic workup will start. Okay, so this was used for Japanese encephalitis. So, here the Japanese encephalitis will be confirmed either laboratory or you can label it as a probable Japanese encephalitis when there is a suspected case in the surrounding geographic area, right? So, this is a picture of the Indian subcontinent who, uh, showing where all Japanese encephalitis cases have been reported so far. So, pretty much the entire three-fourths of the Indian continent with a few states are being spared. So, we have a child with acute encephalopathy. Okay, so there is an alteration in mental status. So, you can divide as either infectious or para-infectious or non-infectious. So, non-infectious and para-infectious we already discussed. We have uh, ADAM which is a demyelinating disorder. We have autoimmune encephalitis and toxins can cause encephalopathy, metabolic disorders and electrolyte abnormalities all can come under this. Infectious encephalopathy which we discussed just now, viral, bacterial, parasitic, even fungal. These are all some of the illnesses which can present as acute encephalopathy. DKA, of course, when the child comes to you, the child comes to you in altered sensorium, there is not going to be any fever and uh, in case uh, if there is severe hypoglycemia, there can be seizures also. So, the clinical diagnosis will be an acute encephalopathy, but the why that happens, it's because of DKA. Again, mitochondrial, mitochondrial cytopathies, some metabolic disorders, race-like illness, all these present as encephalopathy. ADAM, autoimmune encephalitis can all present as alteration in the mental status with or without seizures, right? So, all this you will have to remember. These are your differential diagnosis. Drave syndrome, it is a encephalopathy, it is an epileptic encephalopathy. Again, it can present as a febrile seizures with encephalopathy. So, that is also taken as the, these are all will fit into the syndromic diagnosis of an acute febrile encephalopathy. Okay, fever triggered or you can just label as a syndromic diagnosis in acute encephalopathy. So, you just remember these are all your differentials. Differentials. When you get a case, this will serve as your differentials for any case of an acute encephalopathy or acute encephalitis. If you are sure that the child has headache, fever, any signs of inflammation is there, you can label it as acute encephalitis, right? So, the infections, say the viral infections or the bacterial infections can either directly be neurotropic, directly infect or it can be a post-infectious or demyelinating illness. Some viruses like measles can trigger a demyelinating illness. Varicella can cause a vasculitis which can cause encephalitis. Influenza can cause a hemorrhagic pathology.